Hey everyone! Welcome back to Easy Robotech, the go-to channel for all things tech and configuration. If you don't have your CCNA certification or aren't familiar with network switch commands, but still you want to do the configuration of the Cisco network switch, don't worry, you're in the right place. Today, we are going to walk through configuring the Cisco switch using a web browser, step by step and without needing to touch the command line. So, let's dive in and get started. Before we begin configuring the switch, you'll need to set up the DHCP client identifier on your computer to get the IP address from the switch. This step is essential whether you're on Windows or Mac. So let's start with the Windows setup. First, Type Registry Editor in the Windows search box on the taskbar and press Enter. If you're prompted by User Account Control, click Yes to proceed. Once in the Registry Editor, navigate to hkey underscore local underscore machine, then to System, followed by Current Control Set, Services, TCPIP. Parameters and finally interfaces. You'll need to find the Ethernet interfaces global unique identifier GUID. Once you've located it, add a new entry called REG underscore binary and name it as DHCP Client Identifier. Then set the value to 77, 65, 62, 75 and 69, which stands for Web UI. After you've added this, restart your PC for the changes to take effect. Now, if you're on a Mac, the process is a little different. Go to System Preferences, then click on Network, followed by Advanced, and then TCP IP. In the DHCP Client ID field, enter Web UI and click OK to save the settings. Once both setups are complete, go back to Switch and it's time to check if the express setup led on the switch is blinking. If it's not, as you can see in my case it's not blinking, so take a paper clip and press the reset button for a few seconds until it starts blinking. When it begins to blink, press the reset button again for 1 to 3 seconds. Now you'll notice one of the copper ports on the switch starts blinking as well. At this point, you can connect your patch cord to the blinking port. As you can see here the port 1 backsplash 3 is blinking, so let me connect the patch cord to it. And ensure no other devices are connected to the switch except your computer, and make sure your PC is set as a DHCP client, so it can obtain the IP address automatically from switch. Most probably your computer should be assigned an IP address within the 192.168.1.x backsplash 24 range. To find the exact IP address, go to Network and Sharing Center, double click on your Ethernet port and then click Details. Here, you'll find your computer's IP address and the DHCP server's IP address which is the IP address of the switch. Make a note of the switcher's IP address, then close everything and launch a web browser. 
In your browser, type 192.168.1.254 into the address bar. You might see a warning message, so click on Advanced and then Proceed. When you log in for the first time, the default username will be Admin and the password will be the serial number of the switch which you can find on the switch front or back side as shown on the screen. After logging in, you'll be welcomed by a screen that indicates this is a factory fresh device. To begin configuring, you'll need to create a new user account. You'll be presented with two options, configuring the switch via Cisco DNAC Cloud, which we'll cover in a future video, or using the classic Day Zero wizard for more traditional project setups. We'll be using the classic wizard for this demonstration. The first step in the setup wizard is creating a new username and password. After entering your login credentials, you'll have the option to set a separate password for command line access or sync it with your login password or you can select no password for command line. Once that's done, under device ID settings, give the device a name, for example, XYZ, and if you have a dedicated NTP server, you can enter its IP address here. Otherwise, you can manually set the time and date for the device. Afterward, click on Basic Settings to continue. In the Device Management Settings, you can assign an IP address to the management interface. For this example, let's say you want to create a VLAN. Enter the VLAN ID, for example, 1060, along with the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Once the VLAN is created, you'll need to associate it with a port on the switch. To do that, select a port, example port 1 backsplash 5, and assign it to the VLAN. Scroll down, and depending on your requirements, enable or disable settings like Telnet, SSH, VTP transparent mode, and CIP status. Once you've completed these configurations, click on Switchwide settings to proceed. In this section, You'll have additional configuration options like voice and data VLAN configuration, STP configuration, and general settings. For this tutorial, we'll skip these for now and finish by reviewing the day zero configuration summary. You can also preview the commands that were executed through the CLI preview. Finally, click Submit to apply the configuration. A confirmation message will appear, letting you know the configuration was successful and you can now access the web UI using the new management IP address. And that's it, you've successfully completed the basic configuration of the Cisco switch using a web browser. From here, you can dive into more advanced configurations, which we'll cover in upcoming videos. We'll look at creating VLANs and more advanced setups using the graphical interface. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified of our next video. Thanks for watching Easy Robotech and I'll see you in the next one.